Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend some here with me. It is getting to that time of year where we are focusing on exams, focusing on final assignments, focusing on getting the semester done in so many cases. And one of the things that I hear at this time of year, every single year, and that I have felt every single year at this time of year is really intense stress that feels like it's not going to go away, right? I know that you have felt this way too during really intense periods of stress. You just want it to be over. You just want the period of stress to be over. You just want to be able to have some relief and decompress and relax. So I think it's really important that we chat about how we can actually create some space for calm, for unwinding a little bit, and for really the ability to center during these really intense times of stress. And these times of stress also can be compounded by applications being due, by our deadlines coming up. And so it's really important that we have strategies that we can rely on time and time again that help us to decompress a little bit, to relax a little bit, but also to feel refreshed so that we can continue to be productive and advance during really stressful times. So I want to start by talking about cell phones and notifications. I want to begin with some of the philosophy that informs all of our work here. And a few of these concepts run through all of the work that we do here. So number one, before I get to any strategies, number one, don't feel discouraged. And the reason that I want to provide that piece of advice first is that sometimes when we're in really high stress situations, we can start to think about the easy way out. The easy way may seem really attractive, but it won't get you to where you want to go. So number one is don't be discouraged. You are exactly where you need to be. Right now, you are where you need to be. At any given moment, you are where you need to be so long as you're there thoughtfully and intentionally, okay? Number two, don't zone out. Okay. Relaxing and zoning out are two different things. Relaxing and detaching from reality are two different things. Okay. And I'm very serious about this. Zoning out or detaching from reality as a result of stress actually leads to some really serious mental health issues, including things like substance abuse, which I have personally seen in students and in professionals alike. So, It's really important that we are very intentional about how we handle stress in the moment and over time, because that has a long lasting effect on who we become and how we deal with things. Okay. And it's not a good idea to rely on substances in order to help relax. Those cause more problems than we have already and more problems than they're worth in many respects. And I've talked about these issues before on this podcast. So don't feel discouraged. You're exactly where you need to be. Don't zone out. Be very intentional about how you are relaxing and how you are dealing with stress. And don't rely on substances in order to get through. That never ends well. 
Now, before I actually get to the strategies, you know, it's really easy to Google how to de-stress, how to relax. And you'll find things like go for a walk, burn a candle, ask for a hug, relax your muscles, listen to some music, you know, laugh, focus on breathing, things like this, you know, like. And so while all of those things may work, I think that it's really important to identify the intention behind each of these things. And so the intention of each of these strategies that you'll read about is not just about lighting a candle and it's not just about moving, although that is really important as we know. It's about doing something different, right? It's about actually taking a meaningful and intentional break from whatever it is that you are doing that is stressful and perhaps time sensitive, right? It's imperative that we take meaningful, intentional breaks from what it is that we're doing so that we can recharge and come back fresh. Okay, so number one is to do something different than what you're required to be doing, okay? And sometimes doing something different, in fact, probably all the time when I'm talking about doing something different, I mean do something that uses a different part of your brain. So if you've been doing something really, really technical, sitting at a desk for a long time, staring at screens, writing for a long time, do something that uses the other parts of your brain. Do something to give the part of your brain that is being worked, because don't make any mistake, your brain is very much a muscle that you are using and growing, and we want it to be used and grown to your advantage, that actually taking a break from what it is that you're doing and using a different part of your brain helps you actually process what it is that you need to process in order to come back fresh. And interestingly, the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, came out with some research about taking short breaks and how taking short breaks can actually help our brains learn new skills. And what they found was that when our brains are at rest, they replay memories of learning new skills at rest. And so this is one of the reasons why I always say to my clients, to our community, is give your brain the time that it needs to process what it is that you're doing. Let your subconscious work. Because when you give your brain rest time, as in sleep, healthy sleep, as in taking purposeful, meaningful breaks, doing something, as I said, that uses a different part of your brain, what you're actually allowing your brain to do is process. I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast before, but when I was going through really, really intense times of studying, intense times of working, intense testing times, when I was taking standardized tests, I actually had a sticky note up beside my bed and what I wrote on it was trust your brain in caps, trust your brain. Now, I don't know where I got this from because I certainly wasn't doing any coaching at that time or maybe I had just started Apply Yourself and it was in its very early days, but I certainly wasn't doing the kind of work that I'm doing now in terms of the coaching and strategy. I was really, really focused, of course, on the applications because that's where we began, but it has grown to so much, to be so much more than that. And what I wrote to myself was trust your brain. And I obviously needed this reminder to trust my brain. And it helped me. It helped me a lot because what I wanted to do was stay up all night and study. What I wanted to do was finish as much as I possibly could. And what I wanted to do was not take a break and sleep or take a break and do something different. That's this this is the level of stress I'm talking about. And I know that in this community, we have so many high achievers just like me who can relate. And when you don't want to get up, when you just want to push through and keep working and you're exhausted, this is exactly when you need a break. So I would have that up. I had that sticky note up for years. It was turquoise. And I wrote on it, I think in like black Sharpie or something. I still remember it. And it said, trust your brain because I knew that 
so much good work was happening when I gave my brain not only the tools that it needed to succeed, i.e. the actual studying or working or writing, but also time to think, time to process. And this is one of the most important tools that I think contributed to my overall success is that I knew that my brain, just like all of our brains, need a chance to rest and recover. And it's not just because we're exhausted. It is actually serving you a functional purpose to take healthy sleep and to take healthy intentional breaks. Your brain actually does so much for you when you're not studying. It does so much processing for you. It does so much playing and replaying of memory and learning at rest. And you have to actually let it rest in order to do that. So number one is absolutely do something different than what it is that you're doing that is really stressful. Do something different, use a different part of your brain and sleep I know that, you know, it's so annoying when somebody says, oh, you got to get better sleep. You got to get better sleep, blah, blah, blah. Okay, like we all get it, but it's not that easy. But when we understand the purpose behind what sleep actually does for us, and I mean healthy sleep, what that does for us is so much more beneficial than, than really so many other things that we could be doing. And that often takes a shift in how we are doing what we're doing. But if we start with the intention of letting our brains do what they are supposed to do, which is think and process and not just be jam-packed with intense information constantly, our brains will serve us and we will appreciate and have gratitude for ourselves and what we're able to accomplish once we realize that. Second. Notifications. And this comes from, of course, having my own devices and being around people who have their devices and being around all my students who have all of their devices. There are absolutely constant notifications, constant. And when we download an app on our phones, we say, okay, I consent to giving my life away and also to receiving notifications constantly bombarded every single day. And so when we are constantly receiving notifications, what we're doing is constantly distracting ourselves from what it is that we're doing. And I don't mean like somebody's texting us and we receive a notification, although that can be disruptive also, especially if they're not exactly somebody who we want to be hearing from right now, or if they're, you know, somebody who we're happy to hear from, but we're busy right now. So What I'm talking about are like, for example, news alerts that are basically constant all day, every day, like social media alerts that are basically constant all day, every day. And I'm talking about the Instagram alerts, the TikTok alerts, the emails that come through constantly that we get notifications about. These notifications are happening multiple times a day, interrupting our thoughts. And this is like a really basic thing to be talking about, but no one's talking about it. And so I think that it's really important that we talk about it. And I think what is so vitally important here is that we realize that these notifications are disruptive. And the reason that it's so important to realize that is because when we agree to have notifications sent to us, We don't necessarily consciously think, oh, I've just agreed to CNN sending me 60 billion alerts in one day. Or I didn't necessarily agree to have my phone tell me when to work out six times a day. Or when to eat healthy five million times a day. Or how many steps I've taken or telling me you better get up. And while these can be helpful tools, in many cases, compounded, they're not. They're actually really harmful to us and our productivity. So, for example, what I've done, because I realized that I was being bothered by so many irrelevant things, 
that, for example, I had Instagram alerts going off. I had Facebook alerts going off. I had LinkedIn alerts going off. I had my three or four emails alerts going off. I had, in some cases, news alerts going off. I shut them all off with the exception of email because obviously I have to be connected when you're, you know, when you're running businesses, you have to be connected when you have clients calling you and, and you have obligations, you need to be connected, but there's no sound on any of these notifications. They're all vibrate. And for example, social media alerts, I just straight up turned off. Any news organization apps that I had completely uninstalled so that when I want to read the news, I can go and read it as a conscious decision, not as something that's forced upon me because I agreed to some notifications, okay? Go through your phone. Go through your phone. It's your phone. Use it as a tool for you. Don't let these apps take over your phone and take over your life at your expense because that is what they do. They're taking over our brain space and they take over our energy because we're typing, we're typing, we're studying, we're doing something, we're studying for the MCAT, we're studying for the LSAT, we're writing our applications. It happens all the time during sessions with clients where we're working really intensely in their materials and suddenly their notifications are going off. And what we hear is, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And I don't mind, but I know that it's disrupting them, right? I know that it's disrupting them. So number one, delete everything that you don't need and things that you are interested in, but you have to make a conscious effort for, do that. Make a conscious effort to do the things that you care about. If you care about the news, make a conscious effort to go read the news once a day, but not 60,000 times a day when you're getting notifications. If you are interested in getting a certain number of steps in, Do it. Absolutely. But do it intentionally, not because a phone tells you to. And sure, if you want reminders, here's an idea. Input when you're actually going to work out or when you're going to get those steps in, input that into your calendar so that you get your notification, not the notifications that are programmed by somebody else and by an app that's collecting all of your data anyway. Okay, so make these really intentional choices. If you want to read the news, go read the news. You don't need a million pop-ups every single day. Imagine you're reading a website, okay? You're doing some work and you're getting pop-ups constantly and you're XXXX, you're you're getting rid of the pop-ups constantly. You're annoyed that those pop-ups are interfering with what you're reading. The same thing is happening with your phone and your life, that you are working, you are doing things, even if you're relaxing, you're, you're socializing, you're getting ready for bed, you're doing your nighttime routine, you're exercising. All of these pop-ups are coming up, you know, like in the movies when, you know, you see the actors and the actresses and there are like text bubbles coming up on the side or like when it's like bleep, bleep, bleep. And it's like all of these notifications are coming up. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. And you're clicking the X on your life constantly because you have these notifications popping up out of nowhere that you actually have no control over. So I encourage you, go through your phone. Take a few hours. It's worth it. Get rid of apps that you don't want. Get rid of notifications. So even if you want to keep the apps, turn the notifications off. Turn the notifications off. And I know some people just want to be like fully informed about all the news happening all the time. But how are you focusing on yourself and what you need to get done? And when are you resting? When are you taking that break from all of the other things? Or from all the crap, depending on what time of year, what's going on, what's going on in the world. Like we also need a break from that. Turn off those notifications. Get rid of the apps that you don't want, that you're not intentionally using. And instead, be intentional about the things that you do want for yourself. Do it right now. Do it right now as we're talking. Open up your phone and look at what's there. 
Look at what's there. And which apps are causing you to be distracted the most? You don't need Instagram notifications. You don't need Facebook notifications. You don't need LinkedIn notifications. You can intentionally sign in. You don't need TikTok notifications. You don't need CNN notifications. You don't need any of these notifications. Be intentional about what you're doing. Go onto the websites and look at what you want to look at. Don't let yourself be bombarded by an algorithm, by automatic notifications that they know they're pushing out to you because they know that you're not going into the app and changing your preferences, which takes like one second to do. Sure, you might have to go through a few layers, but like do it. You're going to thank yourself in like 15 minutes when you have like some silence. Because our brains were not meant to function with all of these distractions bombarding us. That is not how we evolved. That is not what's good for us. So turn off these distractions that you can actually turn off. Yes, there are horrible things going on in the world that we cannot distract ourselves from, and nor should we. We should actually process them and go through them. But what we can do is be intentional about them. We can be intentional about how we process, intentional about how we reflect. Our brains were not intended to function productively with six billion notifications coming into our lives, into our minds, into our visual periphery. Oh, my phone's lighting up. What is it? Every six seconds in the day. Be intentional about what you're looking at. Be intentional about what notifications you're getting and turn them off. Turn off your social media notifications. I do it for a week. Do it for a week and I want you to message me. Send me a DM. I know this is counterintuitive, but send me a DM on Instagram or email me (laughs) or give me a call. (laughs) My phone number's on the website. You can literally call me, email me, DM me, and tell me how this has gone for you. Give it one week from today. Give it one week. Turn off your notifications. Turn off the Instagram notifications. Turn off the Facebook notifications. Turn off the CNN notifications. Turn off whatever notifications. And instead, be intentional about your choices. Not, us. I have to take steps because my phone told me to. Do it because you want to and you're developing your life the way that you want to live it. So do that for me today. Let's do it and tell me how it's going. Send me a DM on Instagram and tell me how it's going and I'll share it. Because I want to see how this is going for you and I guarantee you, I guarantee you that it is going to improve not only your productivity, but also how you feel about yourself, your self-esteem, your confidence, your life. Because when you're constantly distracted by other people and other people's lives, you're not focusing on yourself. You're not focusing on yourself. You're focusing on whatever somebody else is telling you to focus on. And that's not giving you agency and autonomy over your own life. You have to take that. You have to take autonomy. You have to initiate the autonomy and the agency over your own life and over your own choices. So be really, really intentional about that and tell me how it goes. I'm truly interested because I can tell you that the second that I got rid of, I don't have, like, let me tell you, okay? I don't have any games on my phone. No, no games. I'm not like a phone game player. I don't have any notifications other than emails that come through. I don't have any social media notifications coming through. I'm very intentional about the time that I spend online. I don't have, I even, I don't even have any notifications other than email coming up on my desktop or my laptop. I am very intentional about what I am being distracted by and when. I have control over my distractions, let me put it that way, and you need to have control over your distractions too. And this all relates back to our conversation about how to deal with times of intense stress 
because you actually need to be able to take a break from what it is that you're doing and not be distracted by notifications or you need to be able to take intentional breaks without having been interrupted five times in the last six minutes because you could be working thinking that you're getting things done and I know that you know what I'm talking about here working believing that you're getting things done and you know an hour has gone by and you're exhausted and you want to take a break I am all for taking that break. Absolutely. But then you come back from that break. And secondly, I'm going to talk, or thirdly, I'm going to talk about what it is that you did during that break. But you come back to work and you realize, oh my God, I didn't get done as much as I thought. Well, let's talk about why you didn't get done as much as you thought or as much as you intended. Where was your phone during that time? How many notifications did you get? And so many times I'll hear, oh, but I wasn't having a conversation with anybody. And it doesn't matter. You don't need to be actually engaging with another person to be interrupted by notifications. So do this. Do this for one week. Turn off your notifications. Uninstall apps that you're not using that are just annoying you. And be intentional about the time that you're spending on, for example, social media or reading the news. And that brings me to the other point is be intentional about when and how you're using social media. Taking a break and scrolling is not taking a break. Taking a break and scrolling is a form of distraction. And we don't feel rested after scrolling social media and TikTok for what you intended to be 10 minutes and is now three hours, right? I know you're with me on this because it happens to all of us. Even without the notifications, we still get stuck on social and the apps want that. Like that is what they intend. And so we have to be thoughtful and mindful about it. And I've talked about this in previous podcast episodes, which we'll link here, but we really have to be intentional about how we're spending our breaks. So scrolling is not actually a break. Scrolling is a distraction. And you can scroll intentionally and you can stop scrolling intentionally. Okay? And sometimes that may take a bit of training, right? We may actually have to set a timer and actually stop scrolling when that timer goes off. Because when we're scrolling, what are we focusing on? Other people, other people's lives, not our own. And especially during these really intense times of advancement, we can't be focusing on that. We have to focus on ourselves. We still care about other people. We still have people that we support and people who support us. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about scrolling for extended periods of time that you didn't intend to spend scrolling. Now, some people I know have, for example, jobs in social media while they're working on their advancement. So scrolling is part of their job. Figuring out what the trends are, figuring out what they're going to be, figuring out the some graphics and audios and all of this. I get it. You may have to scroll as part of your job. I 100% get it, but be intentional about it. Be intentional about it. Absolutely. If you need, if you, if you want to read the news, be intentional about it. The point is make your own choices. Don't let technology make choices for you. That's not what it's intended for. That's what it's used for sometimes, but that's not what it's intended for. Technology should be making our lives better, not worse. And technology should be making things easier, not harder. And we need to be using technology as a tool rather than as a crutch. Okay, so do that for me. Do this for me. Uninstall the apps that you're not interested in, that aren't serving you. Turn off all of your notifications for social media, unless you need it for work or something. And 
Let me know how it goes. Let me know how much more spare time you have. Let me know how much more productive you are when you're sitting there getting something done. Let me know how much more you're able to, how much more easily you're able to focus. It is all about learning how to focus. Focus doesn't come easy. If you think focus comes easy and you're looking for a quick fix for focus and discipline, you're not going to find it. You are not going to find it. It takes discipline and hard work in order to be able to focus. And it takes advocating for yourself, even to your own phone, to your own devices. So be that advocate for yourself that you need in order to advance. Set boundaries with your technology. Turn off those notifications and let me know how it goes. And third, be really conscious about the people you're spending your time with. Be really aware of who is, who you allow to be in your life and whether they're good for you. Yes, there are always circumstances where somebody may be frustrating or there's somebody that needs some little extra support and extra care. That's always going to happen. But do they support you? Do you support them? Do they encourage you to do things that help you grow? Or do they encourage you to do things that help you stay still, that help you settle, that help you stay stuck, that help you stay complacent? Are they growing? Are they interested in their own growth? Because what we often see is people who are not interested in their own growth drag people down with them. And it's not to say that they can't grow. They absolutely can, but they need to be doing it intentionally. And if we grow, we bring people with us who want to be growing intentionally too. And so what I hear so often from my students, from my clients, is that there are people who, and and I've experienced this too in my life, That there are people who keep you still, who keep you stuck, and they may not even know that they're doing it, but it's up to you to identify, not them. You're identifying who's good for you and who is not. And it is so important that you do identify that in a really thoughtful and intentional way. Like I said, it's not about the people who are going through a tough time and who need your support. It's not about that. This is about the people who keep you stuck, who make you feel bad for wanting to work on yourself, who make you feel bad for wanting to study. Oh, just come out. Just come out. Everybody's out. Everybody's here. Everybody's there. You're stuck at home. You're studying. You're, you're still working on that. You want to apply where? Why? It's so hard. Right? We all have at least one person that we can think of who's like that. So, who are you letting take up your mental energy? Who are you letting take up your time? And how are they making you feel? Nobody. I don't care who they are, related or not, partner or not, nobody should be preventing you from growing. Nobody should be preventing you from growing. Now, they don't need to actively be doing anything to help you grow. That's not, maybe that's not what their, what their role is professionally, personally, they, but they can't hold you back. And make no mistake, you are never stuck. You're never stuck in a relationship. No matter what kind of relationship it is, you can always reevaluate and do what's right for you. You are never stuck in a relationship. I don't care what the status is, you're never stuck. There are always ways to get out at any age, any stage, any level, any kind of relationship that's not good. There's always one or more ways out. And it's really fear and complacency that can keep us there. Fear of the unknown and many other things, potentially, depending on the circumstance but you are never stuck. And so if you feel that there are people in your life 
who are holding you back from what it is that you want to do, from what is in alignment with you, remember this. You have one life. You have one life. And it is nobody's choice but yours how you spend it. Yes, there may be some supportive people that help you through and help you deal with things. But you reach out for that support. You welcome that support. Similarly, you can reject circumstances that do not support you. And these types of relationships rear their heads during really intense times. Because at other times, Sure, we can entertain the, those people. Sure, okay, I'll go out. Sure, okay, whatever. But when we actually want to get something done and those people are actively trying to prevent us from doing what it is that we want to do, whether it's going out, whether it's bad habits, whether the relationship just isn't good for you anymore, this comes up during really intense times when you may have a shorter fuse you may not be able to handle so much because you are dealing with so much. This is when these things become really intensified. And so take note of that. Take note of how you feel. Take note of how certain people make you feel at certain times. And I don't think that if somebody's not supporting you in your growth, you don't need to have like a big blow up with them. And, you know, breaking off your friendship or whatever. You don't need to be so dramatic about it. You can just take time and take some space. They call you, you say, I'm busy. Because you are. You're busy working on you, which is absolutely the best possible thing you could be working on. Imagine if everyone was able to take time to work on themselves in a really intentional and productive and reflective way. What kind of world would we be living in if everyone? was able to do that. So make choices that allow you to do that, to work on yourself, because that is the best thing, that is the best investment of time, of energy, of money that you can do. Absolutely. So do something different. Use a different part of your brain. Let your brain work. Let your brain work. Let your brain do what it needs to do in order to process what it is that you're asking it to process. Give it a rest. Do something different that is not scrolling, that is not using substances. Do something healthy. Do something different. Do something creative. Use your hands. Do something. Do something different. For you, you don't always need to do things with other people. You can do things because you want to. Turn off your notifications. Uninstall the apps. Turn everything on silent. And while you're working, turn everything on silent. Turn everything that you haven't. Turn all the notifications that you haven't yet turned off. Put everything on silent while you're working. Give yourself the opportunity to actually work. Don't sabotage your productivity because of notifications. And make sure that the people that you allow into your life aren't preventing you from growing. And if they are, it's time to reevaluate. And this, these are actionable strategies for you to use anytime, not just during high stress times, but especially during high stress times when we need to be able to focus. But this should be something we work on all the time. So reach out and tell me how these are going for you. Send me a DM at Apply Yourself Global. It is me. I do receive them. And let me know how this is all going. Thank you so much for staying and chatting. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want, and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at Apply Yourself Global and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.